Coming up, we take an in-depth look at how burn injuries are classified. And we see how the Taiwanese government is tackling its rice surplus problem. Welcome to Dow Headlines. I'm Mary Lee. Thank you for joining us. To pray for those affected by the Bali Water Park explosion and encourage the medical professionals who care for them, city volunteers held prayer ceremonies in different communities in Taipei and New Taipei City. Many participants hope their efforts will give the burn victims the courage to stay strong as they face the road to recovery. We hope city volunteers will lead the public in praying for the bird victims' speedy recovery. Fulfilling the public's wish, city volunteers held an outdoor prayer ceremony at Zhenghua Park. Among the many attendees, Xu Yongchang brought zongzi to be given out. I hope these young people will recover soon. My heart goes out to them as they are just like our kids. Since Zhenghua Park is close to a hospital, some burn victims' families also came to join the prayer ceremony. I rushed to the water park on the day of the accident and saw a group of Tsuji volunteers comforting the bird victims. After we got to the hospital, some other Tsuji volunteers also came to care for us and provided us with hot meals. I am very grateful to them. Turning to Da'an district, Tsuji volunteers also held a prayer ceremony at Tsuji Taipei chapter. We really want to help the burn victims, but we don't know how. Besides making a donation, we thought we should come here to pray for them. I am not a medical professional, so praying for them is the best way I can help besides making a donation. People from all walks of life also gather at Shuanghe Jing Si Hall to pray for those affected by the explosion. We cannot bear their pain for them. As Buddhist practitioners, we can only pray and offer our best wishes to them. Their injuries are very serious. We will pray for the youngsters' speedy recovery at today's prayer ceremony. We honor people's kind thoughts and the prayers offer great strength to the burn victims. It will help them on the arduous road to recovery. At the prayer ceremony venue, get well cards fill the posters, and people continue to extend their best wishes for the burn victims, giving them the love and strength needed to face this ordeal. Among the 11 ceremonies held over the weekend, one was held in Zhenxin General Hospital and another at Xinguang Hospital. There, not only did the burn victims voice their gratitude for the loving care they have received, but former burn victims came forth to share their experience so that family members can be better prepared for the long journey ahead. At Xinguang Hospital in Shilin, Taipei, a former burn victim, Guo Mingyi, joins the prayer ceremony. The path to recovery is very long. Rehab isn't something that is completed in just one day. This path is also emotionally and physically difficult for family members of the burn victims as well. Family members need to keep up their strength, as that's the only way to keep providing support for the burn victims. Guo's personal story of recovery helps the family members of the victims of the Body Water Park incident understand what is required of them in the future. The main point is the support of the family. I can visit him every day, and although his father can't be here, I know he's worried about him as well. I believe his rehabilitation path won't be lonely. United in prayer for the burn victims, over 200 people gathered at the hospital lobby to send their blessings and well wishes. At Zhenxin General Hospital, an event was also held to send prayers to the burn victims still fighting for their life. I've had such a hard struggle during this time, but thankfully the city volunteers have given me a lot of emotional support. 
The medical team here is wonderful as well. I want to thank everyone for taking such good care of my child. Those burn victims whose injuries were less severe also joined their prayer ceremony to thank all those who show them such loving care. Meanwhile in Linko, volunteers are hurrying to prepare fruit boxes. Worried about the burn victims' family members during their stay at the hospital, volunteers prepare fruit boxes to make sure the health of these family members is being taken care of, so they may better face the long journey ahead. In light of the Formosa Fun Coast Water Park incident, our Dai reporters interview Superintendent of Taichung City Hospital, Jen Shouxin, to find out a bit more on how burn percentages are calculated and what it means to have second or third degree burns. As soon as a patient arrives at a hospital with burn injuries, doctors are right away able to estimate the percentage of their body that suffered burns. The palm is about 1% of the body, the arm is about 9%, the two arms are 9% each, one leg is about 18, so is the other one. Dividing the body using the rule of nine, doctors can quickly assess the burn damages suffered by a patient. For example, the face and forearms are 4.5% each, chest and abdomen are 9% each, each leg is also 9% of the body. Duplicate that for the back of the body, and it totals 100%. Burn degrees are also classified into four categories. First degree burn is redness of the skin and minor pain. For second degree burns, the most obvious sign is blistering of the skin. Third degree burns affect every layer of the skin, nerves, and requires skin grafting. Fourth degree burns are electrical burns. However, when burns cover a certain percentage of the body, then they are categorized as a threat to the patient's life. If a second degree burn covers 30% of the body, then it's pretty severe. For a third degree burn, if it covers 10% of the body, then it's very detrimental. Not only are burn injuries prone to infection and complications, but the road to recovery is also very long. Patients not only need to put in a lot of time in rehab, but also need plenty of support from family and friends in order to pull through the difficult path ahead. As our thoughts and prayers are with the victims of the Body Water Park explosion, we want them to know that although the path to recovery is long and excruciating, it is a path that is worth walking. Next, we meet former burn victim Yang Xiaoning, an artist who suffered burns to her face and hands due to a gas explosion at home. Originally, Yang thought her life was over, but after extensive rehab, she has recovered the use of her hands once more and can now paint beautifully again. Concentrating on her brushwork, Yang Xiaoning, an artist from Xi'an, China, is working on a detailed painting of Guanyin Bodhisattva. As she stamps her signature chop on the painting, one can faintly see burn scars on her hands. In 2006, due to a gas explosion at home, Yang's face and hands suffered second and third degree burns. When I was Back then, I thought my life was over. I didn't want to live. When the doctor was talking to me, I didn't want to listen. I was very depressed. After her condition stabilized, Yang was transferred to Dalin City Hospital, where under the passionate care of the doctors, nurses and volunteers, she was able to get the love and care she needed. When I was getting the shots to reduce the scarring, it would make me dizzy and hurt so much that it seemed like I would faint. Superintendent Jin would then comfort me like a little child and I would no longer be scared. Not giving up on life, Yang worked hard on her rehab and was finally able to paint once more. Now each work she produces signifies her hope for the future. In response to the body tragedy, Yang painted Guanyin Bodhisattva for the victims in hopes that the bottle of dew in Guanyin's hands can help ease the victims' pain and suffering. I hope with Guanyin Bodhisattva watching over them, they can concentrate on getting better and getting over this difficult hurdle. 
Yang says she is stronger and braver than before, and that she is now living the beautiful life she had always imagined. Taiwan domestic rice yields continue to be in surplus of what is needed. In light of this surplus, the government has started taking steps to reduce the amount of agriculture subsidies it pays out to farmers through the buying of excess rice. Although the government insists that such steps are necessary, others argue that any rollback in farming subsidies will be a devastating blow for Taiwanese rice farmers. Here is more on that story. During plant rain season, we now regularly face the problems of flooding and mudslides. As we study climate change, we see that such periods of intense rainfall will only get more and more severe. Looking back through the past cases, we see that we might be facing situations that just a few years ago we thought impossible. In the second half of the 20th century, the Earth's population doubled to 7 billion, and the UN estimates that total population will grow to 9 billion by 2050, meaning by the middle of the 21st century, the Earth will have 2 billion more mouths to feed. However, despite this trend and the fact that Taiwan's food self-sufficiency rate is only 32%, the government has slowly reduced agricultural subsidies of Taiwan's grain farmers. Why? In 2008, our public grain reserves stood at 200,000 tons. Now, however, we purchase about 900,000 tons a year. 400,000 tons of grain reserve can last the country four months. It means we have a problem of overproduction. We depend on the government for subsidies. Otherwise, this will only be ready to harvest in four months. It's a big loss as rice is cheap. The latest rains lasted five to six days and flooded many of the fields around here. Although the Council of Agriculture cut the amount of grain subsidies it handed out, it did not introduce any other channels or policies to help the farmers affected by this cut. This reduction of government grain purchases has greatly affected the livelihood of all grain farmers. In addition to facing drought and floods, farmers in Taiwan also face the possibility of the cancellation of agricultural subsidies programs if Taiwan joins current free trade organizations. In those less stable areas that aim for two crops a year, we encourage farmers to just do one crop a year. There are two benefits from this. It leaves the land more productive and increases the size and quality of the harvest. We need farmers to help us maintain our food self-sufficiency rate and increase production. When you open the door to international competition, market mechanisms will ensure that products with higher or more expensive operating mechanisms will not be able to survive. Despite Taiwan's domestic rice surplus being a member of the WTO, it also imports 140,000 tons of foreign rice. To address this agricultural surplus, the government spends several billion NT dollars to buy excess grain from farmers, to store it and to pay mills and grain traders to handle it. Any reduction in this figure could have an immediate and devastating effect on Taiwan's agricultural sector. Farmers take a lot of risk with each crop. Government subsidies should not only come at harvest time, but throughout the entire growing process. In the end, however, most scholars believe that opening up Taiwan's agricultural markets to international competition while helping farmers appropriate subsidies will be the best way to keep Taiwan's farmers successfully employed and competitive. It is often assumed that vegetarianism is bad for one's health. However, is really that the case? In our next report, we meet non-identical twins Wang Hongchun and Wang Boxiang from Tainan, Taiwan, who have been vegetarians since birth. <laughs> Yes, 
身体负责，无健康，将心变得唔贪食，该食菜菜甲水果，互你健康，无烦恼啊，无烦恼。那我来这个。好，你来剪。剪那个灰灰的地方。你<笑>跑去哪里啊？他们。When they were a few months old and could eat baby food, I prepared vegetarian food for them, and I insisted on using only fresh ingredients. I was quite adamant about that. We never ate out. They only ate what I prepared for them. I don't want to eat out. I will always do my own. They know that when animals are raised for food, it uses up a lot of the world's resources, which has a detrimental impact on our planet. When we are hurt, the pain we feel is unbearable. Imagine the pain these animals feel when they're being slaughtered. Humans kill animals, but yet to carry on living. Isn't that unfair? Mama, it's done. Where are you going? It's done. Let's go to the plant. Do you have any experience with me? Yes. How are you feeling? It's good. Where did you go? Where did you go? Where did you go? Yes. I hope those who have yet to adopt a vegetarian diet can do so. If we don't eat beef, we won't have to raise cows. If we don't raise cows, they won't emit CO2, and we can keep the planet safe this way. Bo Xiang never loses his temper with anyone. Sometimes he cries when he is sad, but he soon gets over it. He prefers to talk it out with his peers. When they started at Siji Elementary, it was around the same time we were promoting vegetarianism. I remember we played a video clip about a cow being slaughtered. Then I heard crying coming from the back of the classroom, and it turned out to be Hong Chun. We Recently, Zulu Tsuji volunteers from Durban, South Africa, traveled to East London, King Williamstown, and Port Elizabeth to conduct home visitations and recruit more people to join their ranks. This grandmother suffers from diabetes, and the two large wounds on her legs have started to fester. She wrapped the wounds in gauze to keep the flies off. Tsuji volunteers gently massage the grandmother's legs as they tell her that the rice they brought for her came all the way from Taiwan. The grandmother tells volunteers she has never heard of Taiwan, but she knows that it is a place with loving and caring people. In the heat of the day, the volunteers' footsteps remain firm as they travel through rural communities, bringing comfort and love into every home they visit. The senior says he hasn't stepped out of his house in ages as he has difficulty getting around. <laughs> Volunteers kneel down to listen to his frustrations and offer him comfort. Not letting any opportunity go by, volunteers also held a small gathering in the community to spread Tiji's message and ideals. This is where community volunteers grow their own vegetables to provide food for orphan children. Although this community is considered a dangerous area of King Williamstown, thanks to the volunteers' efforts, a cycle of goodness has emerged here. Six students of Zhanghua's Nanguo Elementary School recently learned about the Syrian civil war, and their hearts went out to the people affected by the war. Hoping to raise public awareness of the crisis, the students started a petition and also raised funds for the refugees. The Syrian civil war has raged for four years, killing at least 200,000 people, forcing over three million to flee their homes, and turning innocent children into soldiers. Many people will die. And then? Many people will feel happy. They feel very happy. They feel very happy. 
After these students learned about the Syrian civil war, they began to pay more attention to international news. The news was about someone killing others with a kitchen knife. I could not find any international news. Hoping to raise awareness of this humanitarian crisis, the students started a petition and also began raising funds for war victims by selling household items they no longer use. After we told them about the situation in Syria, we asked them to sign. Through drawings, the children also expressed their hope of putting an end to the civil war in Syria. I hope they will all have houses to live in. Since many people there need food, I drew bread. In addition, they also need clean water. Strength can be accumulated, so we hope we have planted the seeds of love and compassion in the hearts of these students. Taipei City is a bustling metropolis crowded with cars and people every hour of the day and night. To help prevent pedestrians from bumping into each other when crossing busy streets, Lai Guanjie, a student of Mingzhi University of Technology's Department of Visual Communication Design, came up with a crosswalk design featuring directional arrows to allow smoother crossings. When crossing a busy pedestrian crosswalk, one often finds oneself having to dodge to avoid colliding into those coming from the opposite direction. To address this problem, Mingzhi University student Lai Guanjie came up with a crosswalk design which features directional arrows. When we are crossing the road, we often bump into the people coming from the opposite direction, and they too are trying to get around us. Since the arrow is a common traffic sign everyone understands, I came up with an idea to incorporate it into a crosswalk design. As crosswalks are painted as horizontal lines, pedestrians often walk on whatever side suits them. For seniors and residents who have mobility issues, this can put them at risk of a fall. By incorporating arrows into the crosswalk, pedestrians will know which side of the crossing they should walk on and thereby reduce the chances of accidents. You will know the side on which to cross, so it decreases the chances of accidentally bumping into a person coming from the opposite direction. This concept uses easy-to-understand visuals which are simple to execute and cost-effective. In design, we often say less is more. We can design something great without having to spend a fortune on design costs. I think we should promote it so that people will be more aware of what they mean. If people don't understand the signs, there still will be chaos. Although Lai's idea still needs to be implemented, he hopes to see his concept come to fruition one day. At the end of the program, we head to Seattle, Washington of the United States and join city volunteers as they take the opportunity to spread vegetarianism, conservation ideas, and city's missions to members of the public at the Seafair Summer Festival. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching the headlines. Goodbye.